Today I'm going to talk about uh, what for me is a, a new departure. The first 3D printed models I've ever painted. And these are uh, three ogre models entitled Ogre Butchers, uh, prepared by, uh, designed by uh, someone called Duncan Shadow. I don't think it's his real name, but it's his artistic name. You can uh, sign up to his Patreon um, and get a load of cool miniatures uh, via STL files a month and print them on your own 3D printer. Um, this month seems to have quite a lot of good old hammer stuff, which he's good at. Or frankly, you can do what I do and just buy uh, the STL files for the miniatures that you want rather than get these larger bundles. That's the image that got me interested of what the 3D renders look like. This is what they looked like uh, printed and based. They seem to me an obvious cross between this creepy and cunning uh, and very spiritual druid from the series Britannia and this guy. And there is a kind of innate crazed violence to uh, ogres in the most prominent uh, fantasy IPs, which make you feel they could only have been created in Britain. Tell me you don't think it's true. And nothing wrong with that. Just a few quick video thoughts. I, I didn't print these out myself. The person who did it did a fantastic job, but I didn't realise that you need to just look around for where the supports were and kind of cut the little bits off. You can probably even barely see them now. I uh, wasn't sure what colour to paint these straps. They look like something you know, gladiators wear. I guess it's a fantasy world, so I just used Carindon granite. Normally I would use some kind of beige-ish kind of material kind of colour. Um, or black leather, but I thought the hair needs to be black. In my mind. And um, if I do a lighter colour, it, it'll just blur out with the skin and the white um, apron. I used Blood for the Blood God, the Games Workshop technical paint, which normally I'm very pleased with, but this time I just, I mean, because you would have assumed that the material would have absorbed some of the blood. But still, it looks all right, it looks seems to be bloody. I, I've come to a view with all of these models that you know you can keep going and going and going, but ultimately you just need to have a painted miniature, um, and otherwise you'll never get through your lead and now 3D printing pile. And so, so with some things, I just thought, you know, look, it's not a focus of the model. Let's just paint these, uh, just paint it one uh, color and just wash it and just leave it. And I did that with these rings. And you know, who would notice these rings gleam naturally anyway. And there with this kind of wrapping around the hair, the hairband, you know, I just painted it, gave it a a non oil wash and thought, you know, what value am I adding by trying to dry brush or highlight this? Not a lot, really. That was very much true with these little bits in the pot. I just thought, you know, what I keep going, going, what's the point? And similarly with this little fellow, I found it's a very unrewarding person little creature to paint, but you know, he does look quite entertaining and you know, no one's really looking at him. I might give it a few more washes and just hope it blurs into the flower, which I just dumped over there. Um, but anyway, he's a very noble servant of uh, the big boss. And over there, that's Sluggy. Sluggy follows around the pot, hoping one day that something will actually fall out. And occasionally it does. He's a bit lazy, bit of a Bit of a scavenger there. And he was just painted with a couple of uh, layers of 
it's not green, added in a bit of yellow, and then I just dry brushed it. Because again, you know, it's not really a focus. Um, I use that te uh, technique whereby you just, again, to keep things simple, you just paint something, uh, a darkish kind of uh, gunmetal colour, and then you get a bit of um, packaging material, and then just dab it into a, a lighter silver, and then get rid of most of the paint, and then just dab, 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 just to give a sense of kind of, you know, like, you know, when you've got a frying pan, and you can just see sort of scrape bits at the bottom, or a wok where it's all scratched at the bottom. Then I got Jacaro Orange, did the same kind of thing, just dabbed this around for a bit of a rust effect. I love the snarling looks on the faces. And again, in, t in, in terms of the principle of just keeping it simple, I thought I could give them slightly pinker lips. I could, you know, give them a bit of stubble, you know, by just doing some darker washes. And I thought, look, Ultimately, I've got quite a lot of ogres, and if you do that for each one, you'll be there forever, so cut your losses. This one might be my favourite one, even his weapon or forward slash magic wand looks like it's about to leap out of the darkness and just bite you. He's the only one where I bother doing an eye, because the eyeball was the only one substantially big enough to actually bother doing. Everyone else sort of just had these little peeping eyeballs out of these fat facial frames that you couldn't really get to. Um, he almost looks like the leader, the most charismatic. Or is it the dude with the hair? It's always the dude with the big hair, isn't it? Now, um, Duncan Shadow seems to adhere to the old hammer sculpting principles, which I think are fantastic, whereby you have, you know, one particular focus and you keep everything else simple. Um, and that was fantastic because it makes it very easy to paint. Um, but then I thought these were a bit simple. And so I stuck on a few bits from a Games Workshop sprue. Uh, I mean, that little fellow, is he a supporter? Or is he basically just a snack? Who knows? But it adds a bit of character. I wasn't too happy with how the skin panned out. I um, I gave the miniatures a kind of Halfords primer undercoat because that sticks to anything and you never know with uh, materials like resin, you know, whether the release agent or, or something on it means that the paint won't stick. So the Halfords primer always helps. And then I gave it um, a Barbarian Flesh primer from the Army Painter. And then I just, you know, used washers and, and kept adding uh, the various skin tones that I have, you know, elf flesh and dwarf flesh and mixing in a bit of white and kept highlighting up for the things. I'm not sure you can actually see the benefit of any of that in the folds. Uh, and then I went with some washers underneath the Games Workshop kind of um, sort of brownish washes of various shades. Griffin Sepia, I think was one. Ogryn Flesh, I think was one. Um, and just kept mixing in a bit of um, thinning medium to stop it kind of pooling with too much pigment. But, you know, overall, I thought to myself, you know, again, keeping things simple, just do sharp highlights on the face and leave it at that. In terms of scale, They'll look okay with my existing ogres. I mean, you expect the heroes to be a little bit bigger. Style is slightly different, a bit more cartoonish, but I think still pretty much in keeping. Modern Stormcast Eternal. If you wanted to use it with kind of foundry scale, you know, this isn't a fantasy uh, or medieval dude, but, you know, they're all the same height. So they are quite a lot bigger. And here's, I think, an ogre butcher from the old Warhammer range, made out of metal, where I've tried to convert it up a bit, add a bit of interest. But I'm not sure I'm going to bother now, because I think these are a lot better for a similar purpose. Um, but we'll see. 
So they're about the same size. And there you have it, the three brothers, gross and fat as opposed to grim. That's how you imagine them, you know, these three brothers born as triplets to some weird ogre mother f finding gut magic together and walking through life, doing horrid and crazy things. Um, but they were good fun. And uh, I must say f something for Duncan Shadow as a sculptor. You know, the problem with, from, to my mind, with a lot of these 3D sculpts is, you know, there's just, because you can blow up um, on ZBrush, you know, the, to whatever level you want and do whatever intricate detailing you want, you, know, you produce something that is, you know, for someone like me, you know, who's used to kind of 1990s, 2000s, Games Workshop miniatures or Foundry miniatures, War Games Foundry historical miniatures, you know, there's just too much detail on, on those 3D sculpts. And this guy understands, you know, the kind of the principles of that kind of 1990s classic GW era, whereby you pick a, an interesting feature, you know, here, say the face, and keep everything else simple. And even something like that um, weapon, which is pretty simple, just conveys so much character with so little effort and so little detailing. Uh, I, I haven't had this much fun painting a miniature for ages. Um, anyway, by all means, please like, comment and subscribe uh, as I grow my little channel from nothing to nothing much. Um, anyway, speak soon.